This is Math 6, Lesson 4-6, Mixed Numbers and Improper Fractions. A proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator is less than the denominator. For example, two-thirds. An improper fraction is a fraction with a numerator greater than or equal to the denominator, like four-thirds. A mixed number shows the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. For example, four-thirds can be written as one and one-third. So four-thirds is the improper fraction, and the mixed number is one and one-third. It is really important to be able to convert between improper fractions and mixed numbers when working with fractions. The better you can do that, the easier it will be to work with your fractions. There are two methods for working with, for changing mix, uh, improper fractions into mixed numbers and mixed numbers back into improper fractions. To write an improper fraction, for method number one, what you're going to do is think of pictures. If I have five and two fifths, that means I have five holes and two fifths. So if I was to draw a picture of that, if I was to just take like a, a box and break it into five pieces, one, two, three, four, so much for them being equal. Those are five pieces. I would have five of those. Now, if I look at this, if I was to shade in, if I was to shade in um, some of these things, for example, let's just, we'll shade in five and two fifths. So if I was going to shade in five, I would shade in all of this one, all of this one, because I need five holes, all of this one. That's three holes. This is four holes. This is five holes. And then I need two-fifths of this last one, so I would shade in two of these things. If I was to count that up, that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 27. It'd be 25-fifths. That would be the, the 25-fifths would be the five whole things I, I shaded in. And then the two-fifths is a little two-part right here. This is, would be the two-fifths part. So 25-fifths plus two-fifths is 27-fifths. Pictures are marvelous. They help you to see things, but they do take up an awful, awful, awful lot of space. And when your numbers get really big, and like maybe you have something with a denominator of 32, I don't want to have to draw pictures where I have to break it into 32 little parts. So the second method is the method that I use most frequently, and that is what I call the clock method, because eventually, essentially what you're doing is you're going around in a clock like this. You're starting by multiplying the denominator to the whole number, adding that product to the numerator, and writing that sum over the denominator. So you're going around in a circle. In other words, I multiply this number by this number, I add that product to this number, and then I write it over this number. All right, so I took that 5 and I multiplied it by 5, got that product and added 2, and put that all over 5. So I basically got 25 plus 2 over 5, which made it 27 fifths. That's the method that I use. It's the method I think is very, very efficient, and it's fairly easy to follow. The pictures show you why it works. I have five groups of five fifths, okay, because each box represents five fifths, or one. So I have one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, five groups of five fifths, and then a two fifth on top of it. Okay, let's take a look at converting some uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions. If I have three and five ninths, I want to write that as an improper fraction, okay, I'm going to do, and I'm going to use the second method all the way through because I'm just more familiar with it and I like it better. So I'm going to say that I need to take my nine, multiply it by my three, and we go this way, around the clock. So nine times three plus five, and write all of that over nine. So, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 plus 5 all over 9. 27 plus 5 happens to be 32, so this becomes 32 fifths. You'll get to a point where you should be able to do this in your head. I can
can do this in my head. For right now, I want you to show the steps until you get really, really good at it. Because once you get really, really good at it, then you don't have to show the steps much anymore. So here, we're going to multiply here, we're going to add here, we're going to write it over this one. So 5 times 7, which I didn't write that very well. Let me, re let me redo that because I need to make sure I'm following my order of operations. <coughs> Excuse me. 5 times 7 plus 1 all over 5. So this makes this 35 plus 1 all over 5, which is 36 fifths. Number 3, we're going to take 12, multiply it by 7, add 5, put it all over 7. 12 times 7 is 84. Hopefully you know your multiplication tables. 84 plus 5 all over 7. 84 plus 5 is 89, so this becomes 89 sevenths. Okay, so that is converting a mixed number into an improper fraction. But you also have to be able to do the opposite of this. You also have to be able to convert an improper fraction back into a mixed number. To do this, we'll divide. Converting an improper fraction into a mixed number. You divide the numerator by the denominator. In other words, divide the bottom number into the top number. Okay, bottom into top. If there's a remainder, it becomes the numerator of the fractional part of the mixed number. The divisor becomes the denominator of the mixed number, and then you simplify if possible. Let's work through this. So 40 ninths means I'm going to take 9, and I'm going to divide it into 40. 9 goes into 40 four times. 4 times 9 is 36. 40 minus 36 is 4. This is my remainder. The remainder becomes the numerator of my fraction. It goes up here. My divisor becomes the denominator of my fractional part. Okay, so this divisor goes all the way over to there. Okay, so when you write a change in a mixed number, an improper fraction into a mixed number, you make sure that the remainder becomes the top of your fraction and the divisor becomes the bottom of your fraction. So this becomes 4 and 4 ninths. How do we check this? We can multiply back. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 4 is 40, all over 9. That happens to work. 32 over 6, let's look at this one. We divide the, the top number by the bottom number. The bottom number goes into top number. 6 goes into 32, 6 times 5 is 30. 32 minus 2, 30 is 2. So I have 5 and 2 sixths because this becomes my numerator and the divisor becomes my denominator. But 2 six reduces, doesn't it? 2 six reduces to 1 third, so I have to reduce this to make this 5 and 1 third because I have to reduce the fraction. Okay, I have to take this fraction right here and make sure I simplify it. Because 2 6 is not in simplest form, which is why we simplify it before getting into this lesson. Last one here, 23 over 4. So 4 goes into 23. 4 times 5 is 20. 23 minus 20 is 3. So this would be 5 and 3 fourths. 3 fourths is in reduced form, so 5 and 3 fourths is the mixed number form of 23 fourths. Let's do an application. A chef needs two and three quarter quarts of water to make soup. How many cups will the chef need? Hit one cup is equal to one fourth of a quart. Okay, in other words, we need to know how many one fourth quarts does the chef need if he has two and three fourth cups, quarts of water. Well, the first thing I would do is I'd say, hmm, it would be much more helpful to me if I knew what two and three fourths was as an improper fraction. So I'm going to convert this to an improper fraction. So four times two plus three all over four. So that's eight plus three all over four. Eight plus three is 11, so 11 all over four. Now remember, 
it says right here, one cup is equal to one fourth of a quart. So I have 11 fourths quarts. So how many cups do I have? If I have 11 fourths quarts, I have 11 one fourth quarts. So I have 11 cups. Okay. So how much, how many cups of water will he need? He will need 11 cups. Because my denominator is the same here and here, I just need to pay attention to my numerator. My numerator says 11, so I will need 11 cups. And this thus ends improper fractions and mixed numbers.